Welcome or welcome back to Simple Sourdough. We are very happy to see that a lot more people have found our channel. So as always, please subscribe to the channel, like our video if you find this interesting or if we are helping you on your sourdough journey. So our friend Sune, also known as Food Geek here on YouTube, he mentioned us, which uh, gave us the opportunity to reach more people. So we are very happy about that. If you don't know him, you should check him out. And there's a link below our video here, so you can go and see some of his crazy sourdough experiments. So today we are going to talk about this fellow here, which is our sourdough starter, Kurt. And we're going to talk about how to maintain him at home in a smaller scale if you are a home baker. And we're going to talk about how to maintain a much bigger sourdough here in a big production like our small bakery here. So first of all, let's talk about the sourdough and when is it ready. Some of the things we, we look at when we want to use our sourdough starter and put it into our dough we have also talked a bit about this in our previous video where we are explaining how to start the sourdough if you don't have a sourdough at home. You can always go out and probably grab some sourdough from a baker and start feeding it yourself. It can take up to 10 days to start a sourdough. So back to this, some of the things we, we look at to see if our sourdough is ready. As you can see here, we have put a rubber band after we have fed our sourdough. So this is this is where it was after we fit it and now it has doubled in size so that's one of the visual things we can we can do to check our sourdough you can also uh, smell it so this one smells a bit uh, sweet and uh, slightly acid slightly acidic one of the other things we look at is the surface so the surface has to look bubbly and it has to look watery at the same time. Sometimes you can see the surface is just standing like this. And then you need to wait a bit because you want the surface to break up a bit and become watery. So when it looks like this, it's still dry and usually it's not completely ready to put into your, your dough. So when you're working with sourdough, you basically want to think very logic and you want to put as many senses as you can into to making your bread. I'm a chef, so one of the things I do, we, you know, we taste everything. So sometimes I just take a small bit of my sourdough just to, to get a, a hint of which stage is our sourdough at. So if I just get a slightly acidic taste on my palate and a bit sweet, it basically has to taste kind of um, a milk product, like a yogurt. Then I know it's ready to use. Um, I probably would not uh, start tasting my rice sourdough or I would not start tasting my, my stone ground sourdough. It's just not a very pleasant feeling on the, in your mouth. So those are some of the things that we, we look at just putting as many of our senses as possible. You can also uh, Get back we will get back to this now how to to feed it in a ratio so we also have a time time stamp on on when our sourdough should be ready under all the correct circumstances usually a sourdough is at a perfect temp temperature around 25 to 27 degrees celsius so what you see right here is our sourdough that we maintain at home and we basically just carry him everywhere we are having him transported whenever we need him back and forth. So this one consists of equal parts water and equal parts flour. And in this case, it's just entirely strong white wheat flour. So because it has equal parts of both, that means it's a 100% hydration sourdough. If you are lowering your hydration in your sourdough starter, it will take a longer time for it to evolve and become ready. So that means you can adjust in these scales here. You can also add more water and it will become acidic way more faster. It will evolve faster. So since we are doing this equal parts water and flour, we have learned how to track it very well. 
and we're going to talk a bit about this. Also, one of the very important things, there's always three parameters that we are uh, working with to control the pace at which our sourdough evolves. The first one is water, like I just explained. It's the type of flour we are using and it's also, of course, the temperature. What you see here are two different kinds of wheat flour. Right here we have a strong white wheat flour without uh, very few uh, shells from the corn or from the, from the grain. And over here we uh, have some stone ground white wheat flour. But as it has been stone ground, we have maintained all the parts of the grain. So if we add this to our sourdough, it will evolve way faster and it will also have a much more acidic taste. It's very different what pre people uh, prefer to use. If you are using stone ground then, um, or whole grain flour, the sourdough would just work its way way faster. So these are some of the parameters. If our sourdough has become uh, very cold, say that we are transporting it back and forth or it's very cold in the environment where you are, we sometimes give it a water bath. So maybe this one is a, a big container, but just imagine that we fill this one with uh, some hot water, say 40 degrees Celsius. Then we will just dump our sourdough into this and give it a water bath. This will increase the temperature and it will also stabilize our sourdough and make it work way faster. So by doing this we can sometimes speed this effect up and uh, according to the parameter we are feeding our sourdough, the ratio, we'll get back to that in a second, we can speed up the process. This is a very good trick if you are trying to time your sourdough. Some people also have a uh, proofing box where they can control the temperature, so it, it pretty much works the same way. I've also seen people use a uh, sous vide to control the water temperature and it's basically the same thing. Temperature is super important for this. Let's talk about feeding ratio. So what you see here is called 1 to 3 to 3. The first parameter here is sourdough. It's going to write SD for sourdough. Next one here is water. Next one here is flour. So this is a, 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 a thing used in the sourdough community. And it's also a thing that uh, you're using at your workplace if you are working with sourdough. So basically I, I can just call my colleague and tell him, please feed the sourdough one to three to three and then he will know exactly what I mean. So just to, to specify this, this is a way to, to guide us to when we want our sourdough to be ready. One of the important things when we are working with sourdough, we want to take as little of the acidic for the next batch, for the next starter we are using. So usually this is a, a very low number and that's also why we are using bigger numbers here because then we will have a fresher sourdough and it's way easier to bake our the perfect loaf. So if we are feeding with 1 to 3 to 3 that could be 10 grams of old sourdough starter and 30 grams water, 30 grams flour and you can always divide this up and multiply. By feeding in this ratio, usually it takes around 4 hours in the, the perfect circumstances for the sourdough to start peaking and become ready to add to our dough. If we are feeding at a, a higher ratio, we usually do this when we are leaving the bakery in the evening. So what I really do is I just take a very small part of sourdough add into our buckets, then I fill it up with one kilo of water, one kilo of flour, and that usually matches around this 1 to 12 to 12. So in this case, that would be 100 grams of sourdough or 1.2 kilos of water, 1.2 kilos of flour. 
By feeding in this ratio, it usually takes around 14 to 15 hours for this to become ready. And that means we can go home and sleep and do our, all our stuff, get back in the morning. And when we get back in the morning, our sourdough is double the size and is ready to use. It's at its peak. So that means we can start making our doughs right away without having to get back to the bakery and then feed it one more time for it to become ready. This is really how you, you want to work with this. If you're feeding, say, one to one to one, then sometimes you, you bring too much of the old starter and then you will end up with a sourdough that is very acidic and then it's sometimes hard to, to bake the perfect bread. The more acid you have in your sourdough, the faster it will start eating all the sugar from the flour and at some point it will start eating the gluten from the flour and that means your bread will just collapse like small pancakes. So a lot of people have this problem that they are baking very flat bread and they also can't get the ear on the bread. So this is the, the explanation why and this is something you can implement if you want to, to do this in a bigger scale at your workplace. Okay, so what if you don't want to bake every day and maintain your sourdough every single day? Then you can have it stored in your fridge and here's a few things you need to, to do if you want to do it this way. Usually this is what we advocate people to do if they're only baking say once a week and they want to have some bread for the weekends. So the very first thing, you want to have some kind of lid on top of your sourdough if you're storing a whole grain sourdough or a rye sourdough, then you have to be careful if you uh, have a lid that can be screwed very tight because sometimes you see the glass actually explodes because there's too much gas in, inside. What we do for our wheat starter here, we want to make sure that there is life in the sourdough. So what I'm trying to say is we actually only put it to the fridge after it's peaking. If you are just feeding your sourdough and putting it straight to the fridge, then you might, you might actually kill the sourdough because you will put it into some kind of slumber when it gets into this very, very cold degrees. You also uh, have to think very logic because every time somebody opens your, your fridge, some of the cold will just go out and all the heat usually goes to the top of your, of your fridge. So if you store your sourdough at the top shelf, that means it will ferment faster and evolve faster. It will become acidic way faster. And that's the exact same thing when we are talking about proofing our, our dough. If we want our dough to, to be ready very quickly, then we usually put it at the, the top shelf of our home fridge. And if we want to, to stretch the period as when it's fermenting and proofing, we always put it at the, the very bottom. So those are some few tricks you can use. So after you have stored your sourdough and you want to take it out, say you want to bake on a Saturday, you always have to count backwards because you need to take it out and have it in room temperature, temperature before you, you start baking again. So you take it out and then you need to feed it, usually we say two times before it's ready to use again. So what you want to do, you want to scope out a lot of your old sour that comes from the fridge and then you want to start feeding it two times before it's ready to use again. And then you will see it will start finding its balance again and it will be able to, to double its size and become very active. So that's the way you maintain sourdough in the fridge. So this is the end for the video here about how to maintain your sourdough starter and I wish you all the best of luck with getting a nice and active sourdough and that can result in you testing some of our other recipes here on the channel. So again, I hope to see you again. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. You can also ask us on our Instagram channel called Simple Surlai, which just means simple sourdough. Again, if you want to support our project, you can like the video and subscribe to our channel and 
Hope to see you again next time. Thank you.